The Golden Ass by Apuleius is one of these books which are essential for anyone studying the Western mysteries. The book was written in 1024 AD and this particular edition is the Kala edition which is a facsimile of an edition that came out in 1923 and it uses the text as translated in the 16th century and it uses images from that 1923 edition. Uh, those images are by a, a Belgian artist uh, called Boscher. Uh, I, I think it's, I can't remember what his first, Jean de Boscher. There we go. Uh, so it's a beautiful edition, a really, really nice edition. Uh, I've shown you in the past uh, various other facsimile editions by colour. I think I've shown you possibly the Grimm's fairy tales as well as Anderson's fairy tales. And yeah, it's generally really nice. There is one, one issue in the whole book and it's on, for me, on page 53, there's this colour plate which has clearly had a problem and by passing my finger over it I can feel that it's rough and I can tell that that ink has gone on to the previous page or rather these pages were printed in on mass right and uh, this is on <laughs> this ink is on the back of the next book's page and here we have the ink uh, from the following book that was printed just after this one right but apart from that all of the pictures are perfect <clears throat> i can't tell for sure that uh, that will be a problem with every single copy but there are about i, I don't know i'm going to estimate around around 10 of these color plates uh, throughout the entire book okay what are we looking at here so this is the first <clears throat> or rather the, the only Latin um, uh, novel surviving from the ancient world. And it's the story of um, a man of, I'm going to say of low morals, a philanderer, uh, a person who really likes uh, to think about himself and, and not much else and not anyone else and he has an amorous encounter with a witch who then transforms herself into an eagle and he says oh that's a pretty cool trick can you transform me into an eagle as well and she says uh, well um, uh, uh, and here she is transforming into an eagle in fact and uh, she basically says well uh, uh, to, to try 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 this particular spell and he tries this spell and it actually transforms him into an ass into a donkey right uh, and uh, uh, well he's he's rather distraught about the whole thing but um uh it, looking between his legs he thinks that there there may be some some upside to the whole thing but generally he's quite disappointed at being a donkey and uh, he goes on to have all these terrible misadventures he gets uh, captured and purchased by uh, various people who mistreat him and beat him and uh, he gets stolen by a bunch of thieves and he gets um, um, uh, he gets uh, uh, yeah, uh, um, purchased by some unscrupulous boy who again beats him until his, his, uh, his hide uh, splits under the, 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 the whip and, and so on and so forth. It, he goes through a very, very hard time and all the while he is hearing various stories being told by the people that he meets and we get to uh, hear these stories. Uh, we get to discover a little bit about Rome uh, around the time that this was written in the second century Rome, right? Uh, the, the Roman Empire in the second century and a little bit about, uh, let's say, uh, the the human condition around those times. Uh, he describes the the lot of 
various people from slaves to bandits and why they might be bandits and uh, you know what kind of honor there might be among thieves in those days and so on and so forth and it's 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 fascinating it's also hilarious uh, so as i was saying to you this is a 16th century uh, uh, translation so this is the translation, in fact, that Shakespeare was familiar with. And it reads very well. The, some of the spelling is a little bit weird, right? I mean, having an E at the end of himself. But it, actually, it reads very clearly. Uh, there's the occasional word which is, um, well, which, which, which gave me a, uh, the, the, the chance to think what could that possibly mean. Uh, but generally, it reads very well. Uh, nevertheless, to say that I read all of this in this 16th century translation uh, is incorrect. I read the uh, first few chapters and then I downloaded an audio book and I will leave a, a, a link to the particular audio book that, uh, that, 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 that I downloaded uh, down in the description, of course. And it is fantastic. The uh, the narrator uh, it just puts so much comedy, so much life into this story. And it's not the 16th century text that he's reading. He's reading the Thomas Taylor translation from the 19th, end of 19th century. So almost modern, right? So it, it reads, it reads very, um, uh, very, very comfortably. And, uh, uh, and so, and so, yeah, you can really, uh, 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 and, and, don't be put off by the first few seconds, by the way. He uses various voices throughout the story, and the voice that he's given to Apuleius is um, extremely well-spoken and camp. <laughs> and it's actually perfect for Apuleius's character. It's absolutely perfect. But then, depending on the character that is being uh, uh, that, that is speaking, he puts on different voices, and it's just it's just wonderful. Just a, a, a really really enjoyable listen. Not for the faint of heart. Uh, not either for the prudish. The various sexual exploits that uh, Apuleius gets up to in man form and in donkey form uh, <laughs> uh, certainly, um, uh, you know, are, 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 well, would, wouldn't necessarily be uh, make for comfortable family, family listening, uh, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, however, uh, yeah, and, and you know, and some, some, some rather gruesome events happen and so on and so forth. But the whole reason, um, actually, no, not the whole reason, the, uh, the, the, the w w one of the reasons, uh, of course, is uh, that in the center of the book, in the middle of the book, uh, book five is not book five, it's the marriage of Cupid and Psyche. Uh, and uh, what happens is that in the story, uh, a, a young maiden gets uh, uh, carried away by bandits and uh, she finds uh, a, an attentive ear, um, a, a, an old woman basically takes pity on her and tells her a story. And so the f whole of the fifth book, which is right in the, in the middle of the book here, is the story that the old woman tells. And it's the marriage of Cupid and Psyche, which was the first time that this particular uh, myth was recounted in Western literature. Uh, a really, really interesting allegory, definitely, definitely worth reading and definitely worth, uh, uh, worth, worth being familiar with simply, right? It uh, uh, features Venus as a, a rather jealous and um, uh, vengeful <laughs> goddess. Uh, a very, very interesting take, as I, as I say. But then finally, in the final book, the final book is about how Apuleius is trans transformed back into his human form uh, uh, at this uh, at this ceremony, and and the way he does it is through appealing to the goddess Isis. And there's this beautiful. Um, uh, 
can I say him to the goddess Isis or or rather well it's it's not actually to the goddess Isis it's to whichever goddess will listen to him and he he enumerates all these various goddesses and it's Isis who's who who appears to him saying that she is all of these goddesses all of these goddesses are uh, aspects of the Egyptian not Greek and not Roman but the Egyptian god Isis and so he then um, uh, follows her instructions and is transformed back into a human form and is then initiated into the uh, the mysteries of Isis and talks about how his life is transformed by the whole thing and uh, describes to a degree what the initiation looked like which is fascinating really really cool um, uh, it makes for an unexpected reading and uh, of course, there are some points at which he says, well, uh, I'm afraid I can't tell you what was said here. I can't tell you what happened there. But uh, but there's plenty to actually make, give to give you an idea of what the, the initiation looked like. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and then he's initiated later into the uh, mysteries of Osiris. Uh, so after the, the, the one goddess, He's initiated into the mysteries of the one uh, masculine god, and uh, uh, and and that's an interesting point as well. This this kind of um, uh, idea that um, uh, that there is nevertheless this uh, this um, uh, two part uh, initiation, and then there's a third initiation right at the very end as well. Fascinating stuff, really, really interesting. Very um, uh, important insight for anyone who's interested, as I say, in the Western mysteries, in the Western um, uh, occult trad tradition that stems naturally from, uh, from, from these, these origins. Um, uh, it, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's fun, it's, um, uh, it's, I mean, it's hilarious. It's also, uh, uh, entertaining in many other ways. It's um, uh, I, I, you could say it's it's pulp fiction, uh, but it's pulp fiction which gives you um, a, an idea of what life in Rome was like, and it also gives you an introduction to uh, the Western mystery. So I mean, it's. It's fantastic, fantastic. And this is a really beautiful, beautiful um, uh, edition at $40. I think that that's actually a very, very reasonable price. That, that, little, uh, um, that little problem with the ink that I was showing you earlier on is, yeah, it's, 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 it's a shame, but it's, uh, you know, the, the, for $40, that, that really is... Uh, let me just give you an idea of the size as well next to my hand there. It's a large book, as you can see, you know. Um, and uh, uh, the, uh, if, if you're wanting the later translation, the Prometheus Trust has actually published all of Thomas Taylor's works, including uh, one of the books, which is Thomas Taylor's translation of The Golden Ass. So that's actually available as well. I'll leave links down in the description for that as well if you're uh, more interested in a, in a more recent translation and are more interested in the, in the text um, uh, and in the um, readability of the text for a modern audience uh, than, than in the beauty of the 16th century translation accompanied by those lovely uh, images uh, by by uh, Jean de Bos, uh, de Boscher. There we go. That's everything that I've got for you today. Thank you ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the review. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you very soon with another video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.